Good afternoon and welcome to Carolina's Pig Dissection. I am Angela White and I will be your facilitator for today's webinar. I'm also a teaching partner with Carolina Biological, but before we go any further, I want to introduce to you all two participants who will also engage in dissection with us today. I have Sarah and I also have Danny. So they will be dissecting along with me today. I hope that you all are excited and geared up for a wonderful dissection experience. I wanna share with you just a couple of goals for today's webinar and hopefully we will have accomplished those goals by the time we reach the end. So one of the goals of today's webinar is to really help you all to become more comfortable with using PIGs in your classroom to address some of the next generation science standards. Additionally, we're seeking to really introduce you to mammalian anatomy, and then we wanna help you see how this dissection experience is really aligned with the next generation science standards. So with that, I do wanna share with you all today that three science standards will actually be addressed, and whether or not you all have adopted these science standards, you're still gonna have some standard that's somewhat aligned with each of them. So with that, the first one that we will definitely hit very hard today will be disciplinary core concepts in that we will heavily address structure and function. And that's really a prevailing theme within biology, the realm of biology. I'm always telling my students that if you understand the structure of something, then you can really have a good solid understanding of its function, you can't separate the two from each other. Additionally, you'll see that cross-cutting concepts will also be addressed. Again, here we see structure and function come in as well as systems and systems modeling. And then science and engineering will also come into this. So throughout this experience, your students should really be asking questions. You should also engage in that Socratic method with your students as well and asking them questions as well. Developing and using models as well as constructing explanations. So why are these two structures connected to one another and how is that helping the PIC to remain healthy and maintain that balance or homeostasis overall. And then you can have your students to engage in various types of conversations. Again, hitting this concept very hard in that they start to communicate explanations. So even throughout the webinar, I may ask Sarah a question, I may ask Danny a question simply to model what you all should really simulate within your classroom. So before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone is really comfortable with some of the anatomical terms that we'll use very heavily today. And what you'll notice is that there'll be maybe a couple of differences between what you all will use as it relates to the human anatomy. So when I was younger, and please don't ask me why, I really used to enjoy the movie Jaws. And all I knew is that once the music started, that dorsal fin was gonna come from out of that water and everyone knew that Jaws was quickly approaching. So in that, the back side of your pig, we will reference as the dorsal side, hence the dorsal fin that we would see. Additionally, you want to also consider the ventral side to be the belly side. So just as we have a belly, pigs will have a belly side as well, but we're gonna reference that as being the ventral side. So I'll use these terms throughout our webinar today. Additionally, we see that there's going to be an anterior portion and a posterior portion. I'm gonna point all of these anatomical terms out on the pig, but I just want to simply introduce you to them first. Anterior is going to be towards the pig's head, whereas posterior will be towards the pig's tail. So let's take a moment to review. Again, here on the back side of your pig, we have the dorsal region. And as we move to the belly, side of your pig, that's gonna be the ventral region. Danny and Sarah, you all also following along with me today. This region here, we will reference as the anterior region, so that's gonna be towards the head. As we move towards the head, I will say anterior. And then as we start to move towards the tail of your pig, 
we will reference this as posterior. Before we really leap a little bit deeper into our external anatomy, I want to make sure that we really gear up for this experience. If you're looking at me today, I have my hair down. And this wouldn't be appropriate really for engaging in an experience like this. So we want to make sure that we have all of our personal protective equipment. I see Sarah reaching for her goggles or her eyewear. And so the first thing that I will do is pull my hair back. So anytime that I'm bending over the pig, my hair is not going to get in the way or interrupt that. I have glasses on. Sarah and Danny actually have on their eyewear, they have goggles. And so you can have your students to really do the same. Additionally, you see that I'm wearing my lab coat. You may have an apron on, just like what Danny and Sarah have on. The next thing that we'll end up doing, and I see that Danny and Sarah are already prepared, but we want to make sure that we put our gloves on. Okay, so usually my students kind of cringe because they assume that there are going to be these horrendous odors that are released from whatever specimen they're working with, especially when we initially take them out of the bag. But I want to really address a couple of things with Carolina's Perfect Solution. Number one, with Carolina's Perfect Solution, it's really safe, it's non-toxic, so students really don't have to be concerned about that issue. Additionally, there's not going to be any harmful gas in all for it's not going to release these very toxic fumes into the atmosphere. If I were in my lab, we might have a vent or a hood over us just to draw up some of the fumes that might be released. But in this case, you see that I don't even really need that. So ventilation isn't really going to be necessary. Something that I really appreciate, and you'll see this as we get into our pig dissection today, is that Carolina's Perfect Solution very well preserves each of the internal structures of the pig, the tissue, and the organs will look very lifelike. So that's something that I appreciate about the, those organisms that are preserved using Carolina's Perfect Solution. So let's see what we have in front of us you'll need a couple of dissecting tools. So I have a pair of scissors here. Sarah and Danny, they also have their scissors. Additionally, I have a blunt probe, and we also have a scalpel. So if you have one of Carolina's kits and it's brand new, be very careful because the scalpel is going to be very sharp. And I would encourage you to really share the same thing with your students as well. They're already going to be excited about um, really this experience. So you want to make sure that you really go ahead and caution them to be very safe as they're using these tools. So as we have prepped our pig ahead of time, there are a couple of things that you want to make sure that you do to ensure that it's not very messy on the back end. Definitely for sake of time, you really may not have a whole lot of time for cleanup. So what you'll notice on my bench, I have this blue absorbent pad underneath the pan that my pig is in. Danny and Sarah also have the same type of setup. And then what you'll notice is that I have placed my pig in the pan, but before I did that, I made it a nice little blanket that it's going to lay on using the blue absorbent pad. If you don't have blue absorbent pad, then feel free to use paper towels. You simply want to have something in place that's going to really draw up the fluid that's being released as you begin to cut into your pig. So with that, again, place the blue absorbent pad, if you have it, so that the white side, the cotton side, is up, facing up towards you. Okay? So now we'll start to evaluate the external anatomy of our pig. As we move into the anterior portion of the pig, you move into that nose area. We've heard pigs kind of snort, right? So if we look in this nasal area, you'll see nares, which are just essentially the nostrils of your pig. 
You can take the probe and just kind of stick it in there if you desire, but that's going to be the nares, those openings, or the nostrils. So your students would identify this as being openings that would allow for air to pass into the pig. As you move beneath the nose, you'll see that the tongue is kind of protruding, and on there you kind of see these bumps. Danny and Sarah, do you all see kind of these bumpy regions? So this would be sensory papilla that would allow your pig to really detect what they're eating and if it's like sweet, sour, and things along that line. Additionally, if you'll notice, all over your pig's body, you should see hair, which is a typical mammalian feature. And we see that pigs actually have this here. So you can start to make comparisons with your students regarding what they see on their body as a human and what we see on the pig's body. We see the eyes here. And if you kind of open the eye up just gently, play peekaboo for a little bit, you'll see a thin film. And that's just a little nictitating membrane that allows them to really kind of combat any type of debris or things like that that they might come into contact with. Now let's start to move a little bit more posteriorly, but still in this anterior region. Notice here we have these auricles. These would be referred to as the pena, and these are just the ears of your pig. And so we can begin to look in there and see that they're open just like what we would see on ourselves. So let's continue to move along the body of our pig, and we see the forelimbs here. And one thing that we'll notice with the forelimbs or the forelegs of our pig is that they will have elbows. Do you all see this elbow joint here? And they also have a wrist, just like we do. We have an elbow and we have our wrist. So we see the same thing here with our pig. As we turn our pig over, or actually let me not jump ahead just because I'm in that area. So let's move to the hind legs. And we'll also see here that the pig will have knees and also ankles, just like what we have as well. And they have feet. So these are some things in terms of similarities that we would see between our own human anatomy and what we see on our pigs. So now let's turn our pigs so that they are now ventral side up. Again, that's belly side facing you. And what you'll start to see are these teats or nipples. And initially your students might flip their pig over and they'll say, oh, I have a female pig just simply because they see the nipples there. But one thing that we'll notice as we evaluate the external anatomy of the male, which is what I have, and the female is that pigs, whether male or female, will have these structures just like human males, have nipples just like females, just slightly different. So we see the teats there. In females, these would really transition into the mammary glands and allow for milk production and milk to be provided to the young. We also see the umbilical cord here. And now we want to move into really sexing or determining the sex of our pig. Now, I want to show you just a couple of ways to identify a male pig. If you come here just below the umbilical cord on my pig, you will see an opening. And this is the urogenital opening. This is actually going to be in this very belly, ventral region of a male pig. However, we'll see this opening in the posterior, the anal region, on the female pig. As we continue to move posteriorly, on our male pig, we'll start to see this bulge. And I see that Danny has the bulge over there. And so with that, we will classify or identify our male pig as being a male. And then we just have a single opening here at this posterior region just in front of the tail or beneath the tail, and that's going to be the anus of the pig. 
So now we'll take a look at Sarah's pick and we'll start to see some differences here. With Sarah's pick, as we move into this anus area, what you'll notice is that there are two openings on this pig. This is the anus, but this is the urogenital opening. In the male, we saw that right there in that belly region. In the female, we actually see it here. And notice this kind of fleshy flap of skin. That's the genital papilla, which we'll see in the females. Now, just a common mistake of students just overall, students will just assume that because they see that protrusion there in that posterior region that they have a male pig, when in fact they actually have a female. So that genital papilla is just going to be reflective or indicative of a female pig. So what I'm going to do, Sarah, is just kind of go back and forth with you a little bit today since you have a female pig and I have a male pig once we get into the reproductive system. Awesome. So now what we want to do is just take a moment to strap our pig down. And you can either do this using rubber bands like what I have in front of me, or you can do it using string. So I want to demonstrate to you how you would actually use rubber bands to strap your pig down. So what you'll do is take one rubber band and just kind of hang it or dangle it over the other and just open that up a little bit. Then the next thing that you're going to do is kind of a loop-de type of thing where you take one inside of the other, loop that, the one that was dangling, you want to gently pull on that, and that will start to create more of this hourglass type of structure for you, or an X. So that's one. We'll need to do one more. So again, just kind of dangle one over the other, Looking good over there, Danny. And we will pull and draw. Good job, Sarah. And we have our X here. All right? So now what I want to do is actually start with the hind limbs. What we'll do is take one of those rubber band loops, wrap it around the ankle of our pig, and do that twice just for this one. So get it just behind that ankle. And then what you're going to do from there is just take the rubber band up underneath your pan. You might need a little bit of slack to do that. Because we want to get our pig nice and wide open. So we should get it spread apart and place the other one just behind the ankle again and it should not pop off. So I'm just going to position that so that you can see it pretty well. OK. So now we want to do the same thing just behind the wrist of the forelimb or the front leg. Let's do the same thing. Take it under. And we'll kick this up a notch once we get our pig strapped down really well so that we can get into the main event. And just take that again and loop it just behind the wrist. So a couple of things while you all are still strapping your pigs down in terms of classroom management, you can really divide your days up. Essentially, you can spend the whole class period just dealing with the abdominal cavity of your pig. And then you would kind of assign students who might be responsible for cutting in on that day. The next class period you resume and you can move into the thoracic cavity. So that's just kind of a way to really manage your class. You also want to make sure that you have some things out to help your students self-guide through this experience because it's only one of you. And I tell my students that I really can't clone myself. So in that, you want to provide them with some things that will allow them to navigate their way through this on their own. So there are some great dissection mats that Carolina has available that you can use as well. So now we have the ventral side up. And we want to start to cut. 
So you should have a figure in front of you at this point. I believe it's figure number six. We'll start out by using our scalpel. And what I'm going to do is fill in this midline area. So you might hear me say medial, which is going to reference the midline of your pig. And you might hear me say lateral, which is going to be towards the sides. So we might make a medial or a midline incision, or we might move laterally towards the sides of your pig. So with that, you should start to feel this hard bone right here in the middle. And we're not going to go all the way to the base. We won't go all the way to the base. We're going to start our incision round about here. And you want to initially make more of a superficial incision. You don't want to go too deep in this area. And then we'll start to come down. and we'll just kind of branch around the teats and we'll make a parallel cut here. And that can be a little bit deeper because it's gonna be more muscle in that area. Come back up here just above the umbilical cord and loop around and then another parallel incision there. So now we'll go ahead and just kind of put our scalpel down at this point and we can use our scissors. You wanna do it where it's more of the blunt area. And if we start to lift up the umbilical cord, just pull up on the umbilical cord, that'll raise things so that you don't cut too deep, but you know exactly how deep to go. We just don't want to go too deep because there are some organs under there of the digestive system that we want to make sure we're able to take a good look at. So you want to cut through the muscle and again just pull up here. And I'm just going to continue this midline cut. And what you'll end up doing after this, we'll do more of the lateral incision. So with your lateral, come on up here into this rib area because we want to go just above the liver of our pig. So we'll cut across laterally here. and come down here towards this hip area and cut across here. And you wanna do the same thing, just gonna rotate my pig a little bit, make a lateral incision here. And the thing that you don't want to kind of be concerned about, you will cut through the rib cage just slightly and it's, go it's okay, that'll be very easy because they're fetal pigs is still more cartilaginous. So we'll just come across. And I'll just kind of speed this up so that we can get into the nitty gritty. Okay, so you should be able to now lift up some more. and we'll end up folding this flat back. Sarah and Danny, how are you all doing over there? So I just have a lot of muscle here that we're cutting through. Right. And I just cut through a little bit of the rib cage.
I see some membrane here, and it might gush out a little bit, so you might want to have just some paper towels on standby. Awesome. So now we're in there. You can see my liver. We'll cut around here. You should now start to see a little vein. This vein right here is the umbilical vein. You can see the umbilicus here. So what you want to do is go ahead and snip that. Finish cutting back around here. And we'll just reflect this back. And we'll just continue up through here. And I'm going to make my lateral cut just underneath the rib cage, which is fine to cut that back. Just kind of be careful because the heart is going to be in that area. So this will help us in just a few minutes. And I have the diaphragm just here. I'm going to snip that a little bit and take my scalpel to finish separating. And we'll just cut that back just a little bit more. And we'll do the same thing here. You should be able to use your scalpel to cut through again. That's very cartilaginous, so it hasn't quite ossified at this point. And we now see our liver. Danny and Sarah, you all good over there? Excellent. Excellent. So we want to make sure that we preserve this skin flap. We'll talk more about why that's important in just a moment. I'm just going to clean this out a little bit, and then we'll start to get into the digestive system. So we want to start with the digestive system, and then from there we'll continue to make our way. So we'll move into the digestive organs. If you look here, we actually see the largest organ in the body, which is going to be the liver. And we'll notice that the liver has multiple lobes to it. But then when we look on the underside of the liver, there's going to be a structure that is embedded within this right lobe of the liver. And that's actually the gallbladder. Okay, So even when we start to think about the overall structure of the liver, and its function, the liver is going to be responsible for producing bile, which is a solution that helps to really emulsify or break down fats. But when the bile is not needed, it's actually going to be stored in this structure, which is the gallbladder. Additionally, I love to inform my students just in terms of how the liver also helps to regulate our blood sugar level in that when we have an excess amount, of glucose within our bloodstream, the liver is also going to be responsible with storing glucose in the form of a complex polysaccharide known as glycogen. So when we're not really using the glucose, it's going to be really stored here in the liver. Underneath, underneath, we'll see the stomach, which is like this balloon type structure. I see Danny nodding his head there. Just along the outside, of the stomach, we see the spleen. And the spleen is going to be critical in helping our immune system to function properly. As we move along, we'll start to see the small intestines. And I just don't know where you're from, but down here in North Carolina, we say intestines. A friend of mine in Michigan, I won't say her name, she says intestines. So the next thing that we want to start to look at or look for, and I'll just kind of move out of the way here, is going to be more of a grainy type structure. This grainy structure is going to be a gland. The gland that we're actually looking for 
is the pancreas. So the pancreas is also responsible for regulating our blood sugar level. Anytime that you are looking for glands, this same friend also informs her students that it looks like chewed up juicy fruit. So you want to look for this gum, chewing gum, that's kind of embedded within the mesentery. Or some might reference it as being more like cottage cheese or something along that line. So we actually see this embedded here. Danny, are you okay there? Dr. White, can you help me locate the pancreas? Absolutely. So we want to look just below, below the stomach. Do you see right here, Danny, this chewing gum or cottage cheese? type structure. I do, I do. That's the pancreas. Okay. And so the pancreas also secretes pancreatic enzymes. So as you continue along, you should start to run into the large intestines. If it starts to get a little juicy, feel free to kind of tilt your pan a little bit. So we start to run down into more of our large intestines here. And as we wrap down, we start to get into the rectum. So let's go ahead and proceed. As you move a little bit more anterior, just above the liver, you will notice that there's kind of this muscle that lies over top of it, and that's going to be the diaphragm. What we want to do at this point is disconnect the liver using our scissors. Go ahead and take that blunt end of your scissors, and you should see an area that you can lift up there and just kind of snip it. Go ahead and disconnect. And you will have to go back towards the body wall. We're going to take out this whole digestive block. At this point, we can start to see some of the esophagus as well. So I'm going to just separate and snip here and continue to snip going back towards the body wall, cutting through all of the diaphragm. Once you get that separated really nicely from the diaphragm, we should be able to then start to pull this organ block back. As you pull, you may have to snip along the way. Be careful as you're snipping to not cut the underlying kidneys. So we just continue to snip, snip, snip. Just along that body wall. And we're pulling as we're snipping. Pull and snip. I think that could probably be a dance or something along that line. You should also see just some membrane as well. So you may have to cut through this Sarah's membrane. And I'm already down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just kind of transect the cross, just cut across the rectum and remove that whole organ block. At this point, if you want your students to begin to trace the digestive process through the entire digestive system, you can have them do that. You can ask questions or have them to ask questions to one another. And I'm going to just kind of soak up this fluid in here and we'll start to move on to the urogenital system. So we'll just kind of put that off to the side. I'm not quite a kidney bean fan, and I'm just going to cut this back just a little bit to move it out of my way. But here you can start to see these bean-like structures. And we want to just remove the overlying membrane from them just slightly. On top of them, you can start to see the adrenal gland. These are the kidneys for your pig. So go ahead and use your probe to just remove a lot of that membrane to expose the kidneys. 
again, just kind of depending on where you're from, you should start to see these tubes coming out from these kidney beans. Now, I usually will refer to them as the ureter. Some say ureters, tomato, tomato, whatever you prefer. But we have the ureters or the ureters here. And this is going to run down, and this ureter will run down into the bladder, which is going to be in this flap of skin that we have here. So we have these structures of the urogenital system. And something that your students can also do is take the kidneys out and dissect them. And that will allow them to see the different regions of the kidneys. So now what I want to do is move into the reproductive organs so that we can then move into the thoracic cavity. For the sake of time, we have pre-dissected some male pigs. And I'm just going to pull one over so that we can really move up into the neck area. So just deep underneath, we have the penis here. So this has been really removed out. It would essentially be deep and underneath. Additionally, as we move inward into this abdominal cavity, here's the penis. And as we move in, you'll see these small bean-like structures. Just depending on whether or not the testes have descended, you'll see them potentially located right here. Okay, so these are the testes. And then we have the penis exposed here. But again, if your students are really having a hard time, have them feel in this skin flap area. It would be within it. And once they feel a hard tube, they'll know to start probing to expose that. So again, Sarah actually has a female pig. And what we'll do is go over to Sarah and have Sarah to show us the female reproductive structure. So Sarah, what are you identifying here? The oviducts. Okay, so Sarah is showing us the oviducts. And Sarah, will you also show us the ovaries? Little bean-like structures. Sarah calls them little bean-like structures. They look and like that's sprout. here, little bean sprouts. So we have this here. So we have this uterine horn and we have these little bean-like structures at the tip of them, and that's actually going to be the ovaries of our female. So now we have to get moving on up into this thoracic cavity and into the neck area. OK, so we'll skip the neck, and we'll move into the thoracic cavity. I am still going to make this midline incision here. Be very gentle in this neck area. Again, if you are planning to look at the neck, just simply because we don't want to cut into any of the underlying tissue that's there. OK. Awesome. My pig is talking to me, telling me that I'm not treating it too bad. So I'm just going to make a cut there. And what I want to start to do is just kind of probe here just a little bit so I can see how deep I'm able to go. All right, so now what you want to do is be very careful. Take the blunt end of your scissors and just get up underneath the rib cage and start to snip. Again, this is cartilage. So you should be able to snip through there fairly easily. I hear the sound of it. So that sounds pretty good. It's not too difficult. And that's opening up very nicely for us. And we'll cut through. So you should see the pericardium. Peri meaning surrounding cardi is referring to the heart. 
So we start to open this up a little bit. You can crack it back just gently. So a few things that we'll go ahead and identify here, and if I have a little bit of time, I do want to go back up into the neck area. So when we go into this thoracic cavity, we will, of course, see that the ribs are protecting a very important set of organs that are a part of our respiratory system. So here we have all of these lobes of the lungs. So here are the lungs. Underneath that, again, you can see the diaphragm attached there. Now when we look here, we have the heart. And if you look here, just kind of lying on top of the heart, we see the thymus. And the thymus will actually run up along each side of the trachea as well, or the larynx. So we have that line on top, and that's beautiful. So now let's come down to the heart. Again, this is pericardium that I'm just kind of reflecting back at this point so that we can see the auricles or the ears of the heart. So if you push down a little bit, you'll see these two ears. These are the auricles externally, but underneath there would be the two atria of the heart. So those would be the internal chambers. You'll see kind of an outline running across the heart or diagonal across the heart. So here is going to be a ventricle, and also here would be the ventricle. So we have the left ventricle and the right ventricle, the left atri atrium, right atrium, left and right auricles. So I think we have just a little bit of time for me to get up into the neck. So I want to just, again, cut very gently because I don't want to leave this out today. So if you all will bear with me, let's just use our probe. Start to expose this. Sarah and Danny, you all okay over there? Excellent. So what you'll start to see will be some shiny structures kind of sticking out, but some grainy structures as well. Underneath this membrane, if you run your probe here and just start to remove a lot of this membrane, this shiny white structure that my probe is kind of going along the edge of is going to be the larynx. And on each side, here and here, we see the thymus. And lying in between those, we'll see the thyroid gland, which is going to be responsible for ensuring that our metabolism or the pig's metabolism is where it should be for the pig to remain healthy. So we have the thyroid gland here. So if we go just deep to the thyroid gland, we should start to feel a tube under there, and you can start to see it being exposed here with these cartilaginous rings. And these rings are telling us that we have now reached the trachea. And underneath that will lie the esophagus. So again, larynx and trachea, you can feel those ridges and ribs there. Awesome, I think we have covered a lot of what we needed to cover today. Danny, you excited over there? Sarah, feeling good? Excellent. I hope that you are on your end as well. So what we want to do is just kind of take a moment at this point. I believe I showed you the lungs before, but let's go back and just do a quick review. I always do this with my students. So again, we have the heart here. And on each side, we have all of these lobes of the lungs. And then underneath that, again, we have the diaphragm. 
and lying on top of the heart, this glandular tissue that you saw here was the thymus. And so the thymus is actually going to be larger in fetal pigs just in terms of their exposure to different things and ensuring that they remain healthy. You want to make sure that you package your pigs up very well at the end. Um, if you're planning to use them again, make sure that you wet them. Use some type of wetting solution and you can spray paper towel with that wetting solution and wrap your pigs up. Even the internal organs, you can wrap those up in a paper towel that has this wetting solution. I wouldn't necessarily say water because that could kind of promote mold. And then you can just wrap your pig up um, and make sure that you seal the bag. And let's see if we have time to go back in here. I want to make sure that I point out, again, just deep the food tube. So I have the trachea here. If you go just deep, to the trachea, you should see this additional tube underneath. That's the food tube, and that's going to be the esophagus. Okay, so if you were looking for that, I know that I mentioned it and I said that it was deep to it, but that's what you would find, and that would, of course, run into the stomach. Okay, so I see that Danny and Sarah have also identified it over there. Even in terms of just in this final moment, your students really dealing with structure and function. A couple of questions that you can have them to start to consider to make this connection between these organs or accessory organ structure and their overall function. I love to have my students cut into the stomach. And when they cut into the stomach, they'll start to see, and let's see what our pig stomach actually has here outside of some additional fluid. So we'll just kind of dump this out here. A little bit of trace of stuff. So within the stomach, we can't necessarily see it here because it's kind it was kind of full with fluid, but you would see these ridge-like structures, rugae. And as we see these ridges, anything that's going to be elevated always will increase absorption and so that's going to allow for greater absorption even when we start to think about just the overall structure of the small intestines being immensely long that's going to allow for greater absorption as well because this is increasing surface area so just like the rugae those ridges will increase surface area we'll see the same thing with the small intestines so it's a lot of awesome connections that you can really make with the fetal pig I would encourage you to really consider this. I've had fun with you all today. I have enjoyed being your webinar facilitator today. Y'all have been an awesome virtual audience, and I look forward to seeing you at some of the conferences this coming fall as well as in the spring. Take care and have an awesome week.